and uh, three ex-official members. So a total of 20. Parang whole Senate nga ang committee. <laughs> Sa dami. But anyway, uh, apart from me, who serves as chairperson of the committee, the other members of the committee are vice chairperson, Senator Pia Cayetano. And then the members are... Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy Binay, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Joseph Victor Hercito, Senator Jingoy Estrada, Senator Winga Chalian, Senator Christopher Go, Senator Lito Lapid, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Robin Hood Padilla, uh, Senator Bong Revilla Jr., Senator Rafi Tulfo, Senator Mark Villar, Senator Francis Escudero, Senator Tol Tolentino, and Senator Risa Hontiveros for the minority. As ex officio members, we have Senate President Pro Tempore Lauren Ligarda, Majority Floor Leader Joel Villanueva, and Minority Floor Leader Coco Pimentel. Okay. I would like to declare that the committee is adopting and subscribing to the permanent pertinent provision of the rules of the Senate and the duly adopted and published rules of procedure governing inquiries in aid of legislation. This rule shall guide the operation and conduct of the meetings, hearings, and investigation of the committee. For the record, according to the rules of the Senate, the Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change shall have jurisdiction on all matters relating to the conservation and protection of the environment, policies, programs, strategies, technologies, and other innovation addressing global warming and climate change impacts, including but not limited to climate risk management to reduce vulnerability associated with climate sensitive areas and sectors, the regulation of the impact of human activities on the same, the promotion of environmental awareness of our citizens, the renewal of resources in damaged ecosystem and other environment related issues. All matters related to adaptation and mitigation or control of greenhouse gas emissions to enhance resilience and to promote sustainable development. Philippine compliance with the relevant international agreements and cooperation with other countries. Development, protection, exploration, storage, renewal, regulation, and licensing, and wise utilization of the country's national reserves, including but not limited to forests, mineral, public land, offshore areas, and the development of industry based on these resources. During the previous 19th Congress, I likewise chaired the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources and Climate Change. And I'm pleased to report that we have been productive as we were able to pass into law seven legislative measures declaring seven individual sites as protected areas under the mantle of the Expanded National Integrated Protected Area System or ENIPAS Act. These are Republic Act 11685, which refers to the Mount Pulag protected landscape located in the provinces of Benguet, Ifugao, and Nueva Vizcaya. RA 1688, which refers to the Banao protected landscape located in the province of Kalinga. RA number 11687, which refers to the Tirad Pass protected landscape located in the province of Ilocosur. RA 11684, which refers to Mount Arayat protected landscape located in the province of Pampanga. RA 11806, which refers to the Tugbo Natural Biotic Area located in the province of Masbate. And RA 1 one one nine three three, which refers to the Sikogon Island Wildlife Sanctuary in the province of Iloilo, and the last one is RA one one six eight six, which refers to the Naga Kabasalan Protected Landscape located in the province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. 
The, the enactment of these seven measures brought the country's total legislated protected areas to 114, or a total area of 4 million 432,000 square meter, 984.76 hectares that is classified as national parks under the provision of the 1987 constitution. The seven is in addition to the 107 protected areas comprising the 13 individually legislated protected area under the operation of the original NIPAS law of 1992, as well as the extensive 94 protected areas so declared under RA number 11038 or the expanded NIPAS Act that we passed in 2018 when I was first installed as the chair, chairperson of this committee in the 17th Congress. 114 protected areas may appear a staggering figure already, but our work does not stop here. There are still many sites in the country that needs to be brought under the protection of the expanded NIPAS Act if we are to fulfill the state guarantee under our constitution of protecting and advancing the right of the people people to a balanced and healthful ecology in accordance with the rhythm and harmony of nat nature. And so we look forward to pass more appropriate protected area bills this 19th Congress. Ang una-una na po ay yung sa Batangas, Mindoro, yung ano ba yung? Verde Island Passage. <laughs> ano na sila, naglalabi na sila. Kasi last Congress, they brought it to the tourism department eh hindi naman sila to protect them it should be with the environment so they transferred the bill to us and i promised them that we will pass it okay kasi yata yun ang pinaka uh, malaking ano eh uh, oh uh, world famous pala yun eh yung verde island passage oh. okay in the Previous 18 Congress also, we were successful in passing the EPR or the Extended Producer Responsibility Act under RA number 11898. The law amended the 21-year-old Ecological Solid Waste Management Act by introducing the practice of extended producer responsibility by large enterprises on the plastic packaging waste they generated while mandating the DNR to form, form, formulate a national framework on EPR for all types of waste. In sum, the EPR law gives focus to waste reduction, recovery, and recycling, and the development of environmentally friendly products that advocates the internationally accepted principle on sustainable consumption and production, circular economy, and producers' full responsibility throughout the life of their products. <clears throat> Initially, the law requires large enterprises or those above micro, small, and medium enterprises levels to set up their respective EPR programs, which are intended to <coughs> attain <coughs> plastic neutrality through importation, supply, and use of their plastic packaging deemed low in reusability, retrievability, or recyclability. <coughs> and to comply with the rising targets for the recovery of their plastic packaging footprint generated each year, starting in 2023, 20%, 40% in the end of 2024, 50% by 2025, 60% by 2026, 70% by 2027, and 80% by 2028, and every year thereafter. Under the law, we had to limit for now the 
EPR to plastic packaging and to large enterprises to give leeway for the obliged large enterprises and the implementing agency to adapt an efficient rollout of this new EPR bill. But hindi po kung gustong mag-cooperate ng medium, small and micro, uh, voluntarily, i-encourage natin sila under the bill, uh, under the law. Kaya hindi naman linilimit lang natin sa large enterprises. Pero hindi mas dun sa others, but they can voluntarily do it. Okay? That is the compromise under the EPR law we passed. But then, it is important to note that the law also requires an EPR framework and an assessment of volumes of other generated waste that may allow the future expansion of the scheme to include waste with the most problematic components or volumes. I am very much hopeful that the EPR system will make a substantial difference in our collective efforts to reduce plastic waste and remove the Philippines from being from the rank of being the third largest source of plastic waste leaking into the ocean. Alam naman natin na may University of Georgia study that says uh, the biggest contributor of plastic waste into the ocean is uh, China, number two, Indonesia, number three, ang Philippines. Kaya ito yung nahihiya tayo do sa ranking na yun. Kaya pagbubutihin natin ang recycling of plastic waste. In this connection at today's hearing, we will ask DNR for updates on the drafting of the rules and regulation for the implementation of the EPR law. Under the law, DNR, in consultation with relevant government agencies and other stakeholders, is given a period of 90 days from the law's effectivity to formulate the IRR. Sana uh, makuha niya yung 90 days kasi itong... Uh, Coconut Industry Development Fund, eh, 180, ano, ano na, 18 months na, <laughs> hindi pa na implement <laughs> Oo, eh, medyo nahihiya na tayo sa mga coconut farmer. At ang, ang maganda doon, hindi naman magagaling sa GAA ang, ang pera noon, manggagaling doon sa Coco Levy Fund, which has now an 80 billion deposit sa Bureau of Treasury from the napagbilhan nila ng share ng coconut farmer sa San Miguel Corporation. Oo. So, walang GAA yon Ano yon uh, every year, bibigyan sila ng pera at ang pera nasa treasury na. Sana yung EPR natin hindi gumaya doon na kasi 18 months na, wala pang na-implement. Okay. And agenda number two for the healings, the hearing is bills on wildlife resources, conservation, and protection. Uh, uh, dalawa po ang bill, Senate Bill number 125, which I filed, and Senate Bill 467, filed by Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada, referring to an act strengthening the wildlife conservation and protection mechanism in the Philippines, amending for this purpose Republic Act number 9147, otherwise known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and protection uh, providing funds therefore and for other purposes as background there 21 years ago in july 2001 republic act number 9147 or the wildlife resources conservation and protection act was in was enacted pursuant to our obligation under the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora or the sites. RA number 9147 serves as the environmental policy enabling Philippine government to manage and conserve the wildlife resources of the country comprehensively as it included provisions on the following conservation guidelines on the collection, possession, transport, and breeding and propagation of wildlife. The conduct of bio bioprospecting or scientific resource researches, the issuance of the permanent permits with corresponding fees, determination of threatened wildlife species to be categorized as critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable, 
or other accepted categories. The strategy establishment of critical habitats, the list of illegal acts that are considered detrimental to wildlife with corresponding penalties to perpetrators, the seizure of wildlife in illegal trade, the establishment of a wildlife management fund, National Wildlife Research Center, Wildlife Rescue Center, Wildlife Monitoring Units, Botanical Gardens, and Zoological Parks. Through the years, our enforcement authorities were able to apprehend perpetrators of wildlife offenses and confiscate the illegally traded wildlife species. However, due to technological advancement and the use of social media platforms, many illegal wildlife trade offenses became undetected and the people behind it remain unapprehended. Wildlife crimes have evolved and grown. The violators have become more equipped, organized, and syndicated, and the trade and transport of wildlife species have become wild-scale and transnational in nature. Thus, there is a need to give more teeth, so to speak, to the law to help enforcement authority also to apprehend violators. Moreover, the penalties under RA 9147 are outdated and are considered mere slaps on the wrist when compared to the severity of the action of the perpetrators, particularly those involved in large-scale illegal wildlife trade and wildlife trafficking which have yet to be defined and included as offenses as being proposed by the Senate bills. Further, the emergence of the COVID pandemic made us realize the importance of strengthening the conservation of our wildlife and their habitat. It is the constant exploitation of wild animals and their habitats, mostly through human action, the race that raised the risk of zoonotic diseases transmission or the transmission of diseases from animal to human. There were studies suggesting that COVID-19 virus may have originated from bats and the first people infected were traders of bat meat who may have subsequently visited the Yunnan seafood market where the virus spread was first traced. During the previous 18th Congress, our committee was able to report out the committee report on the revised Wildlife Conservation Bill. However, due to lack of material time, the interpolation on the bill was not finished. Thus, we intend to file early so we can pass the bill this Congress. So, uh, since uh, I don't know if uh, Senator uh, Bongo would like to speak, maybe uh, we can give the floor to Senator Bongo if he's online. Uh, okay, so... Is not going to make any manifestation, so we will uh, proceed with the discussion for agenda number one update on the IRR EP on EPR law. So I think you, Secleones, will present. Are you the one who's going to present? We'll just give updates on the okay. timelines. Uh, okay. Madam Secretary, the timing. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you, Madam, uh, Madam Senator, your honors. A pleasant good morning. So firstly, uh, Madam Senator, we'd like to allay your fears that uh, the department cannot uh, meet the deadline as provided for <laughs> under the law for the issuance of the um, what is IRR. Um, through the initiative of our secretary, Madam, we, have, uh, we were able to um, uh, secure a funding under UNDP to assist us in the preparation of the EPR law. So this will be our timeline. Uh, Madam, Madam Senator, the law be became effective last August 13, 2022. And for the period September 1 to 30, we will be drafting the, the IRR and we'll be conducting a focus group dis discussion in, in island-wide stakeholders for the whole month of September. And then for uh, until October, October uh, 1 to 15, we will be finalizing and uh, finalizing the draft IRR. 
and then we will be um, uh, subjecting this to review of our Execom, and uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, provide you a copy of the draft IRR by November 15, uh, 2022, Madam Chair. Consistent? Mm. In September 15, October, November 15, 15 three yes. months. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And then uh, side by side uh, to that IRR, we're also planning to um, prepare the national framework for APR for all uh, types of product for waste. And then same same schedule will be um, will be observed. And in this uh, national framework, Madam Senator, Your Honors, we will be including your strategies on how we can effectively implement the the EPR law. And then uh, six months after the implementation of this law, uh, starting February 23, we will be requiring you know, the enterprises um, to phase in the EPR program in their plastic packaging. And then and on October 2023 onward, we will be requiring the, the enterprises to uh, submit to us annual set of recovery targets. So hopefully, Madam Chair, we, can, we, can, we will uh, be strictly observing these uh, uh, timelines so that can, we can meet the requirement of the EPR law. Yeah, Thank you, Madam Chair. The law by December 31 of 2023, they should be able to recycle 20% of their waste. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the target uh, uh, eh. yes. like for example uh, coca-cola meron na sila ang nestle pa na yung press release nila na 100% na sila naniniwala ba kayo doon <laughs> based on our based on your uh, based on the provision of the law madam chair uh, we will be starting uh, at least uh, plastic neutrality by 2023 for 20% only and then by 2028 uh, madam chair at least 80% which is the maximum. So that's our update, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Yusek Leones. And for agenda number two, uh, these are the bills on wildlife resources, conservation, and protection. Uh, who will be speaking in behalf of the DNR for this? Okay, Secretary. We recognize Secretary Loisaga. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Good morning to the members of the committee as well. I shall be presenting a few points um, for on, the, on behalf of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. And then um, we'll turn over to Director Nati to actually present a video po, uh, as an update for the committee. Good morning, Honorable Chair, uh, Madam Cynthia Villar, and the Senate Committee on Environment, Natural Resources, and Climate Change. On behalf of the DNR, allow me po, to express our gratitude for inviting us to the public hearing to discuss the draft bills on the amendment of Republic Act 9147, otherwise known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2001. For many years, we've been earnestly trying to address the growing and sophisticated syndicate activity of illegal wildlife trade in the country. With the promulgation of RA 9147, which served as a landmark law in protecting Philippine wildlife, we managed to decrease wildlife crimes, but have failed to actually fully discourage wildlife traffickers who scorn and take advantage of the gaps in the country's legislation and existing laws in terms of fearlessly trading illegally acquired wildlife resources. However, as we pursue our battle towards this objective, the potential value of wildlife has also continuously captured the interest of large organized criminal syndicates who operate globally, globally in diversified network links. Globalization has created a new platform and sometimes a deceptive means for illegal wildlife trade at the expense of our country's wildlife resources. This has led to the need to enhance our laws trafficking and the continuous reper repercussions on our wildlife resources and biodiversity are in fact being felt. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources is earnestly calling for the intervention of this august body, Madam Chair, to assist the Executive Department, particularly the DNR, to act urgently and address the growing scale of illegal wildlife trade of both flora and fauna, thereby products and derivatives, and the sophistication of wildlife modus operandi by passing more stringent legal 
laws that actually will increase penalties for convicted criminals and help us with compliance and enforcement. Yearly, the Philippines loses an estimated amount of about 50 billion pesos from illegal wildlife trade. This includes the market value of wildlife and its resources and their roles in the ecosystem, damage to habitats encouraged by poaching and loss in potential ecotourism revenues. Apart from this, our enjoyment of ecosystem services is also compromised as the benefits that we can derive thereon are gradually diminished. Hence, illegal wildlife trade has become a substantial growing issue, which involves not only the international community, but our own domestic affairs in terms of conservation of our wildlife resources and making wildlife crime as the fourth most lucrative transnational crime after human arms and drugs trafficking. And because of that, the Philippines has become a source country, a destination point and a transshipment point as well. Recognizing the gaps of our present law and the need to enhance it, the proposed amendments to RA 9147 will address these. The amendments seek to penalize the crime of wildlife trafficking as a separate offense, will consider wildlife crime as a transnational offense, consider the commission of, the wild, of wildlife crime involving two or more persons as an organized syndicated crime. Secondly, it, it aims to increase fines and penalties for wildlife violations, prohibited activities up to 20 years. Third, to expand the role, it expands the role of other national government agencies and local government units. Fourth, mandates government agencies to control and manage invasive alien species. Fifth, provides the power of administrative adjudication to the DNR, the DA, the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, and the Bangsamoro government for speedy disposition of wildlife cases through administrative processes. Six, to create plantilly positions for wildlife law enforcement, a much needed requirement, as the department needs permanent positions for these officers for consistency of service and for accountability as well. Seven, it aims to provide a remedy to strategic lawsuits against public participation. Eighth, it provides for the Bangsamoro government jurisdiction in managing wildlife resources. Ninth, initiates the establishment of wildlife forensic laboratories, much needed. And tenth, to impose the payment of reasonable costs incurred by the state as a result of violation for the cost recovery, reparation, and restoration of the affected resource. The proposed measures will help to modernize the country's response and equip our government agencies with the legal framework to reduce the criminal activity linked to illegal wildlife trade, if not to curb these activities. We therefore implore the intervention of our legislator and yourself, Madam Chair, on the behalf of, as chair of the committee to prioritize the passage of the amendatory bill. Your support in this amendment is indispensable to the advancement of our efforts and initiatives in achieving our goal to sustainably manage our wildlife resources in line with the SDGs, particularly the target that calls for urgent and significant action to reduce the degradation of natural habitats, halt the loss of biodiversity. It's high time to address the threats to biodiversity such as habitat loss due to predation and over-exploitation, the growing spread of invasive alien species, among many other threats. It's also time to place the health of our planet and our nation's communities and ecosystems as priorities and as the center of all of our plans and pro policies. There is a dire need to update the two-decade-old law to address the growing scale and sophistication of wildlife crimes aided by globalization. We, we aim to no longer tolerate the indiscriminate expo exploitation of our wildlife resources. We must provide appropriate and corresponding penalties for its illegal trade and use and require all users to, to provide benefits for sustainable utilization. Indeed, the sophisticated crimes 
need a sophisticated, robust, and science-based approach. Strengthening 9147 is a necessary step to further protect, conserve the country's wildlife resources and their habitats. We aim to work with you to act now, as some of our losses may already be at the point of being irreversible. By protecting and enhancing our biodiversity we that, that we currently have, we can, in fact, work towards a resilient, sustainable, uh, and, and resilient, sustainable, and um, robust biodiversity and ecosystems for this generation and for the generations that are yet to come. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. If I may, I will refer to Dr. Nati for our video. Rest assured that we will uh, input all you said in our discussion of the bill we're going to pass. Okay. Thank you very much. I, I just want to ask, the first one is human, the second one is drugs. What's the third one? For wildlife. It, human, the, the second one is arms, po. Ah, arms. And the third one, uh, drugs. Drugs, po. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, madam. So, uh, we want to hear also from Director Nati Bernardino of DNR Biodiversity Management Bureau. Okay. Magandang umaga, madam chair. Um, uh, I will not repeat what our secretary has already okay. mentioned, and I believe a lot of hearings, discussions, Steedwell Jew meetings have been conducted during the past Congress about the bill. I just want to reiterate once again our heartfelt gratitude, Madam Chair, for being our champion mm -hmm. in pursuing this legislation. It's long overdue. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I will skip the... PowerPoint presentation because it's the same with what our secretary has already mentioned. I, I would just like to make a statement regarding the proposal of splitting uh, yes. the provisions on flora because, and. Because uh, I don't want, because last time, parang daming questions mm -hmm. sa plants. Eh, baka mamaya pati yung animal ma, ma delay because of yung question nila sa plants. So, Parang dinisayad namin, paghiwalayin na lang namin. Pwede ba yun? I mean... Yes, ma'am. Um, formally, we're making a manifestation that we we are, in general, agreeable to that okay, uh, proposition, ma'am. Just so we can... cannot be separated. I thought that just... that is being more practical, di ba? To separate. Oh. Yes, ma'am. If I may, um, mm. practicality would actually dictate that we actually move forward with... Either one. So if the fauna will move ahead, that would be, um, of course, the most practical. However, Paul, we just like to stress that because we have one ecosystem, that these are, in fact, intimately connected. And so hopefully, Paul, um, we can proceed with the uh, flora as well. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. So we want also to recognize Attorney Asis Perez, uh, Consultant for the Wildlife Project of UNDP. UNDP consultant. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, um, we just want to reiterate our appreciation to the chair, who is the main author of this of this mm -hmm. Senate bill, for, uh, again, being our champion, I, uh, not only for this particular bill, but also most of the environmental laws that we have passed. And so, uh, we, I was a privy to many of the consultations, mm -hmm. and um, there is a general sentiment from the participants in these consultations from Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, that there is really a need to pass this legislation mm -hmm. as urgent as possible. Thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, our Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park, madaming wildlife doon, eh. <laughs> oh, yung mga birds. Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> I just want to inform the secretary that I will be filing a bill to transfer the ownership of the Las Piñas Wetland pa Paranaque Wetland Park from PRA to DNR. Oh, kasi tingin ko wala naman kayong pambili noon eh. Oh, so ile-legislate na lang namin para matapos na yung problema niyo, madamot yang PRA. <laughs> oh, you know, they cannot uh, even allocate a budget to build uh uh, improvements because the land is not the is not owned by the ano DNR so hindi daw makakapasa sa kowa kaya lahat na improvement don donated 
the two buildings there I donated because pag hindi ako magdo-donate, wala namang iyayari do sa wetland park na yon. Anyway, that's why we're filing a bill together with my daughter in the house and then me and Mark in the Senate. And I'm asking the uh, <clears throat> congressman of Paranaque to file similar because it's us, uh, two of us, owning the area, Las Piñas and Paranaque. So I hope we can pass that as soon as possible. So Thank we you, can, uh, because it, it will be a very nice ecotourism destination. And it's just about 10 minutes from the airport. And during the last time, uh, I have asked the DPWH to build a bridge because now you can only reach it by passing through ano, uh, Cavitex. Eh, pag hindi ka malakas sa Cavitex, hindi naman nila bubuksan for you to be able to access the Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park. So I asked DPWH to build a bridge from Makapagal. Uh, so now... Uh, we can access it from Makapagal Avenue. So, and uh, Paranaque, they built a nice fish port there also as a tourist destination. So, I think yung Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park namin will be a tourist destination and for all the get-together of international uh, conferences to be held in the Philippines last time, uh, a month ago, the Wetland uh, Association of the of the World Wetland Association, and we on did uh, uh, an activity there, and they were very pleased. Sabi daw no New Zealand, wala daw silang ganun sa New Zealand. For the first time, we have something that they don't have. It's always that we don't have, and they have. Oo. Sabi daw taga New Zealand, wala daw silang ganun. Maganda daw yung atin. I was so surprised. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> so we'll do that. And I guess uh, one of the questions I will ask our secretary would be your stand on reclamation. Because uh, that wetland park of ours is in danger, in danger to be dis destroyed by the reclamation of Manila Bay. Oh, so, siguro, medyo hikpitan natin ang reclamation naman, di ba? Oh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we believe, po, that any disturbance of the ecosystem, whether it's on land or uh, coastal or marine, will really cause an imbalance and a disruption in the systems that will sustain life in these areas. Okay. And so we will look at this very closely, po, and evaluate according to that criteria. Because uh, there are four rivers, major rivers, uh, going out of Manila Bay from Paranaque and Las Piñas. It's uh, the Paranaque River, the Las Piñas River, the Sapote River, and the Molino River of Bacoor. Kasi yung Molino River ng Bacoor, nagjo-join sa Sapote River at a certain point. So, if there will not be any outlet of this river at ire-reclaim nila, ibabalik sa amin lahat yun. And uh, DPW had said that we will uh, flood by 6 to 8 meters. And 6 meters, I think, is 3-story building. <laughs> eh, medyo, we cannot afford that talaga. Kaya, I, I I am uh, no, very concerned about that. And uh, I hope that uh, you will consider that because we cannot afford flooding. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we will look at all of these projects very closely, Po. Yeah. Um, we know that there is a need mm. for, for a new area. However, we also are cognizant that there is a disturbance that will be occurring I simultaneously. I, I want to inform you that uh, when they built Cavitex in Imus Bacoor, uh, supposed to be aqueduct yun. Yung may mga poste lang tapos lalagyan ng kalye. E tinambaka nila, you know, uh, they had to build a water retarding facility, 45 hectares of water retarding facility in Bacoor and Imus, and they spent nine and a half billion. And... Uh, the government of the Philippines cannot pay for it, so they took a loan from uh, ano, J J Japan. Uh, it's JICA. Uh, Nag-loan sila sa JICA. Kaya ano yung inspection ko, ang mga naandun, mga Japanese, eh, kasi inutang sa JICA. Imagine, I cannot really find the logic why we will build 
uh, water impounding facility on land and then tatabunan natin yung water. <laughs> diba? Dapat mas logical. I-develop na lang yung land. Huwag nang tabunan yung water. Diba? Eh, hindi, hindi ko maintindihan yun why that kind of policy you know, are allowed. Uh, so, gusto ko lang sabihin sa'yo because you are an incoming secretary of DNR uh, the problems that we have had here in uh, in ano ako may personal problem ako because of that Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park and the reclamation of Manila Bay in that area ako wala akong pakialam do sa reclamation nila sa ibang lugar kasi that will be supported by their senator congressman governor mayor but definitely in Las Piñas Paranaque, I will never agree to it. O, kasi mas importante sa amin na wala kaming baha kesa yung sasabihin nila na money na we will earn from that reclamation. You know, as a developer, uh, to reclaim uh, that part of Manila Bay, it will take 10,000 per square meter. Uh, 10,000 pesos per square meter. But the cost of land there is 500,000 per square meter. Kaya yung magre-reclaim talagang yayaman doon at our expense. So, kaya we should be very careful. Ako kasi, uh, I cannot find any logic in it na pababahain ng buong bayan just so they will earn money from the reclamation of the bay. I mean, I, I can't, even if I am yet, yeah, we are a business family. I cannot uh, accept that. Oh, kasi you can always develop land. You don't have to develop the water. <laughs> Di ba? Oh, and besides, sobra na rin ang traffic sa Metro Manila na hindi na siguro uh, uh, magandang practice na mag-develop pa tayo na mag-develop sa Metro Manila. We should go out of the city and develop elsewhere. Di ba? Not anymore in Metro Manila. Oh. Kaya, binibida ko lang sa'yo para you will be guided accordingly. Uh, but be, you will go in to stay with us for six years and at least you know what happened before and the difficulties we had. I had to approach two president, President Aquino and President Duterte, to stop the reclamation in Manila Bay in the Las Piñas Paranaque area because... I cannot stop them anymore. Eh? They're insisting. Eh? So I went to the president. So, sana wag na mangyari uli yun under your watch. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mama. Now we hear from uh, Dr. Arvin Jesmos of ACB. <clears throat> the next virtual. Uh, good morning po, ma'am. Uh, magandang umaga pa. Uh, uh, I, I'll be delivering this message on behalf of uh, Executive Director of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, Dr. Teresa Mundita Lim. Yeah, uh, she is came, uh, online. Came actually. from DNR. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and again, um, uh, we are truly grateful uh, for being part of this uh, Senate hearing. Uh, Chairperson, Senator. Cynthia Villar, Senator Christopher Go, Sen Senator Robin Hood Padilla, uh, esteemed members of the committee, and of course, uh, esteemed colleagues from the DNR. Uh, good morning. Uh, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity is pleased to express support to Senate Bills 125 and 467, which both seek to amend, update, and strengthen Republic Act number 9147. Uh, otherwise known as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act of 2001, or the Wildlife Act of the Philippines, and look forward to the consolidated version of the two. We appreciate uh, this timely effort to revise and enhance this 21-year-old legislation on wildlife. In response to the growing threat of illegal wildlife trade in the country and in the region, and its detrimental effects to the environment, to our economies, and to our, to our health and well-being. Indeed, we cannot overemphasize the importance of protecting our wildlife resources to help reduce the risk of future pandemics, as duly emphasized by Honorable Chair Senator Villar. We express our readiness to assist the committee as we promote nature-based solutions to increase the region's resilience against current global challenges. 
We welcome the provisions on wildlife trafficking and wildlife laundering in the bills and suggest that relevant provisions in the House bills amending RA 9147, the Wildlife Act, particularly, particularly those that recognize wildlife trafficking as an organized transnational crime, be taken into consideration in the consolidated version. In this regard, please allow us to submit suggested texts to the following provisions, namely Section 6 on wildlife information, Section 11 on introduction of exotic wildlife, Section 21 on the determination of threatened wildlife species and listing other wildlife species, Section 22 on collection of threatened or other wildlife species, byproducts and derivatives, Section 24 on the establishment of critical habitats, and finally, Section 26 on illegal acts. We highlight the importance of enhancing national interagency engagement as well as regional and international cooperation through ASEANAPOL, Interpol, and technical support from the ACB, again, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. As the only ASEAN Center hosted uh, in the Philippines, uh, th um, that the ACB can play a valuable role in facilitating collaborative actions and enhancing science-based policy making and implementation in line with national goals and shared interests and responsibilities in the region. Recognizing the transboundary nature of wildlife trafficking, the proposed additional provisions will allow us to foster better coordination with the ASEAN member states to tackle global wildlife crime syndicates operating within our region. Current available data already shows that Southeast Asia is both a source and transit point for illegal, illegally traded wildlife, as also emphasized by Secretary um, the, of the DNR, and as host of the ACB, the Philippines can take the lead in working with its ASEAN neighbors to scale up efforts in preventing future pandemics at source through a stronger legislation on wildlife management and conservation. As always, the ACB is ready and willing to assist the committee and the working group in the consideration of our proposals, the facilitation of consultation meetings, and the consolidation of the House and Senate bills towards an enhanced and more responsive Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, uh, we are truly grateful for being part of this uh, committee, this hearing. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we will now hear virtually from Executive Director Chudor Jose of the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. We recognize them. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Uh, we would like to ex express our gratitude and our appreciation for prioritizing this bill, which we have already submitted our comments in the previous Congress. Um, we cannot stress the importance and the urgency of this measure that will give agencies like PCSD and the DNR the needed teeth for the implementation and enforcement of our wildlife laws and for the protection of our environmental heritage. We would like to express our gratitude for the much needed attention that you have given this measure and that hopefully this Congress, it will be passed at the soonest. Madam Chair, thank you again for letting us participate. Thank you. Uh... Director Jose of the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development. And so we recognize virtually uh, from the uh, Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources and Energy of BARM, Attorney Bar Salinab, Director. BARM, BARM. Nanjamba. Director of BARM. Voila. Voila. We'll go to the next. We'll go to the next. Uh, Director Maria Lourdes Ferrer, Ecosystems Research and Development Bureau. Uh, magandang umaga po at maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Um, 
as part of the DNR family, we fully support and we highly appreciate ito pong bills ng 125 at saka 467 with I think the 125 is the more advanced one. Um, we would like to put forward yung may mga suggestions po kami sa section 4. Um, I've been with the uh, regional executive director sa Nima Roca. So me, medyo familiar po ako doon sa mga problema minsan natin in implementing the laws. Uh, baka po dito sa section 4, this pertains to jurisdiction said, jurisdictions of DNR, uh, DA, PCSD, and uh, BARM. Um, can, if, it, if it's okay, we you magsasuggest lang po kami uh, because um, DNR is handling the wetland species. Uh, I think, well, based on, on the Ramsar uh, definitions, meron pong um, wetland which forms part of the aquatic habitat. So baka ito po, we may need to clarify this. Uh, ano po talaga? Para po sa ground, madali pong sundan ng mga implementors. And then, uh, another one is, uh, I suppose, this are, kasi ang nakalagay po dito, uh, DNR, for instance, all terrestrial, DA, all aquatic. Um, baka we, need, we may need to uh, clarify that uh, within prote legislated protected areas, uh, you, yung management po noon would fall under DENR. Uh, yeah. Uh, protected areas po kasi under the ni in in uh, areas, um, oh. Consideration po is the by a wildlife affected oh, area. DNR. So, baka yun po, we, we may need to clarify that unless the intent of the Senate is ibibiyak biyak na rin po natin. But then, I think, uh, main uh, consideration po kasi when we pro proclaim a uh, uh, protected area is the wildlife then. Now, uh, there was a mention also a while ago na hahatiin po yung flora and fauna, and I can understand kasi ito po yata yung sa plantita at saka plantita. And some are really small scale. Um, we, baka naman po, we need not really go separate, separate, have separate bills. Pero baka po pwede po, doon sa penalties po, doon na lang natin itakel, we could separate yung flora and then we could separate the fauna. Para ho, just to consider those yung mga maliliit ho ito eh, na mga nangungolekta. Remember when we had a COVID, meron yung mga plantito at plantita. So yun yun. And I, I do know that meron talaga mga nagbebenta ng mga wildlife, mga threatened uh, species na. And uh, ito yung mga maliliit lang. So I think uh, we could tackle that. Instead of breaking, coming up with two laws, baka doon po sa penalty na lang po natin itakal. Just so... Hindi eh. Ayaw nila eh. Uh, Ayaw uh, po nila. We went through this in the Senate. We had difficulty. That's why we decided to separate the plants from uh, the animals. <laughs> Kasi ang gulo-gulo ng plants. Uh, you'll be surprised how many are so interested about plants. Oo. I was so surprised. Eh. Parang tingin ko malit na bagay. Pero sa kanila hindi malit na bagay. Kaya I don't want to... Be, to uh, to sacrifice our protection of wildlife, yung mga animals, just so because uh, maraming may concern about plants. Eh, tingin ko naman mas mabigat yung animal, di ba, than the plants. So, so we'll just do the plants separately. Uh, you'll be surprised, mga senador, mga plantitos and plantitas, din sila unang nangungontra. <laughs> Nagulat nga ako eh. <laughs> Kaya, sabi ko, next time, we gave up eh. Sabi ko, next time, we'll separate the plants from the animals para mas mabilis yung animal, di ba? Oo. So, you'll be surprised. They're so concerned about their uh, plants. So. And, 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 and I think, ma'am, dun sa derivatives din po eh. Uh, ito yung mga, we've encountered problems before nung, Ito yung mga yung sinasabi mo na i-separate yung usually under before ang uh, ang ano eh ang uh, fish di ba oh, okay. pero pag protected area pwede natin ilagay sa DNR yung mga lugar na protected area kasi uh, ano 
Tinutulong katulad sa amin sa Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park, tinutulungan kami ng BIFAR. In fact, I I establish a uh, uh, what you call this an office for BIFAR because uh, maraming concerns sa fish. Maraming fishermen doon eh around us eh. Kaya I I'm I'm always asking the help of BIFAR. But in terms of protection, I think it should be DNR because it's a protected area. Beyond the protected area, then it's BIFAR. Uh, we can put uh, indicate that in the bill. Uh. Thank you, Po. Thank you, Po. So, yun naman po, ma'am. Uh, uh, we now recognize... Uh, uh, forest management people, para tapos na po ang mga patatid. Uh, ito, Hindi na. After. Uh, okay. We recognize now Attorney Ray Thomas Kabigting, Legal Officer, FMB. Yes. Uh, good morning po, Madam Senator Cynthia Villar and to the members of the committee and also to the Secretary of the DNR po. Um, for the Forest Management Bureau, ma'am, we already submitted to your office and to the committee our comments uh, last June 30, 2021. But we'd just like to support and greatly emphasize the need for uh, the inclusion of uh, apprehension and adjudication functions in the bill, much like po sa Revised Forestry Code of the Philippines, because, because it will facilitate po, uh, law enforcement uh, and greater... Um, uh, success in implementing the law as soon as it is passed, ma'am. And also, we'd like to support the additional um, um, hiring of uh, wildlife law enforcement officers because the Wildlife Act does not cover only, does not cover only um, uh, animals po in the in the forest areas for in protected uh, areas but also endangered species of plants so marami po tayo niyan ma'am so that's all lang po for the forest management bureau and maraming pong salamat we now recognize uh, executive director Lilian Garcia of the DA NFRDI uh, magandang umaga po madam senator and to the rest of the the group um, for NFRDI po, the NFRDI is amenable with the intent of both bills for the strengthening and amendment of RA 9147. And we agree and support the intent of the bill po. Ma'am, specifically po, I, we have details of comments. Can we uh, submit separately the, the documents for your consideration po? Submit na lang okay. po today. Salamat po, ma'am. Thank you po. Thank you. And the last but not the least, uh, Attorney Leo Angel, Angelo Menguito of DILG. Meron pa. Dami naman dito. Good morning, Mr. Good morning, everyone. Oo. Tama. Tama. Yes. Uh, Ito, dito o bang meron? Ms. Menguito of the Okay, uh, department fully supports the legislative measure. However, uh, we will submit our official motion paper regarding the subject we will consider that uh, we only received a copy of the bill only last August 31, 2022. That's all for that department. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. We now recognize Ms. Marivin Santos, Zoology Division of the National Museum. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting us here and our national museum on behalf of. Um, we are really uh full for this uh invitation and we support the RA nine one four seven implementation, but uh. Uh, submitted our position paper last one June, and I would we would like to maintain our position regarding the amendment to RA nine one four seven about the exemption. Uh, we would like to emphasize that the National Museum maintains an active and very old mandate in the area of natural history 
since 1901. And recently, the Board of Commissioners of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines passed Board Resolution Number 10, Series of 2022, dated 9 July 2022, revising the foundation date and institutional history of the National Museum from 1901 to 1887, based on the establishment of the Museo Biblioteca de Filipinas by a royal order of the Spanish government on August 12, 1887. But this was abolished in 1900 at the onset of the American occupation of the country. So by October 29, 1901, the American government established the Insular Museum of Ethnology, Natural History, and I think we're and having a problem with our natural history and maintaining the fictions. I think we have a problem our with dedicated the, uh, documentation and collection in, 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 of natural history specimens. Sabihin mo na lang, magsabit na lang. Hello? I think we have problem with our communication. Good morning, ma'am. So maybe you can submit your written uh, stand on the bill. Okay. Di maintindihan eh. Can you hear me, ma'am? Can you submit a written stand on the bill? We will bill? submit our position. Okay. Because there's something wrong with the audio. Uh -huh. Okay. Next yes, is... Uh, Thank you very much. Next is Mr. Mm. Sereno, Thank you, Acting Manager of Philippine Ports Authority. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. First of all, I would... The Philippine Ports Authority. Magulo. So we expect our gratitude for being part of this public hearing and the, act, the attention given to the environment. So I would like, I would just like to reiterate the position of the Philippine Ports Authority with regards to the environment. So PPA recognizes the importance of strengthening and improving the existing laws on wildlife resources conservation and protection, particularly for providing funding mechanisms and imposition of stronger and more specific penalties needed to enhance the deterrent effect of legal, unreported, and unregulated collection, possession, exportation, and importation of wildlife by products and its derivatives. It can be noted that wildlife traffickers and organized crime syndicates are increasingly using our seaports as means of transshipment points for the IWT. The data from the DNR, uh, BMB, revealed that with the 337 seaports registered with PPA, uh, there are a total of 17 cases of wildlife confiscation from the period of 2010 to 2020. So this number only reflects actual seizure imports, and it is believed that more cases of illegal wildlife trade remain undetected. So it is worth mentioning that PPA, in cooperation with DNR and the Asian Development Bank, has assessed five of its ports in the readiness to respond to wildlife trafficking. So these are Dalipata Port, Nasibit Port, Manila North Harbor, Manila South Harbor, and the MICT. The workshop, which was conducted by DNR in different dates, the latest of which was on January 21. So the workshop mentioned aimed at spotting at key gaps at the port level, identifying interventions to address gaps, as well as monitoring and tracking improvements across times. Also, PPA. Uh, has signed a memorandum of understanding with DNR BMB on July 13, 2020, in support of the initiatives 
to deter and combat illegal wild trade in all ports within the jurisdiction and supervision of PPA. In closing, PPA interposes no objection to the proposed legislative measures and respectfully endorses their passage. Rest assured that PPA will continually will assist and support DNR, the Department of Agriculture, the Palawan Council for Sustainable Development, and Bangsamoro government in the strict implementation and localization of the strategy and action plan mandated by the legislative measures once signed into law. So thank you. That's all for Philippine Portuguese. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sereno. Now we, the last one we will acknowledge would be the Chief NBI Environmental Crime Division, Attorney Terenos Agustin. Terence Agustin. Terence. Uh. Wala rin? Mute. Saman to. Uh, uh, Good morning, ma'am. Uh, yes. NBI Go ahead. plays an enormous role in the fight against environmental crime. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chair. Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair. Oh. Go ahead, go ahead. Good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, the Executive Officer of uh, yeah, yeah, Environmental yeah. Crime Division. Uh, <laughs> we are very thankful for uh, inviting us here. Mm. <laughs> yes, uh, can you hear us? Hello? Uh, you better submit na lang a written uh, stand on the passage uh, of the bill we, because we cannot okay. understand you. It's all good morning. <laughs> and the other uh, ones, uh, PNP, uh, we from the PNP, uh, Police Colonel Cosme Abrenica, Abrenica and Police General Harold Tucson of the Maritime Group. Can we ask you to submit written stand on the bill? Because we cannot understand you. So, oh, there's something wrong with the audio. Uh, yes. Is yeah, that okay? Yes, yes that okay? Okay. Just yes, give Madam us yes, a Madam written uh, ano, manifestation on your comment on the bill that we're going to yes, refer to the technical working group. Yes, oh, no. Okay, so those we, oh, whom we did not call, uh, I request them to submit their written uh, stand and manifestation on the bill. We're going to refer to the technical working group of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources. So everything will be considered before we go to make the committee report and go to the floor to defend the bill, okay? And I wish to thank uh, Senator uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla for always being available. Uh, ikaw yata pinakamasipag na senador dito na mag-attend. <laughs> Palakpakan natin si Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Nung sinabi nila na Senator Robin Hood Padilla, akala ko nagpapatawa sila na ginawa kang Robin Hood instead of Robin. Yung pala, tunay mo palang pangalan, Robin Hood. Di ba? Oh, thank you for coming. And uh, I guess he, he is a first-time senator. Gusto niyang mag-aral sa ating mga committee. Kaya lahat ng committee hearing na andun siya. Nag-aaral siya. Thank you for being so uh, industrious. Alam mo, kaming mag, uh, mag uh, alis na sa Senate. This will be my last term. Eh, medyo may katamaran na kami. <laughs> napagod na. Napagod na sa maraming konsumisyon dito sa Senado. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, I wish to thank also Senator Bongo, who's online. I wish to thank also our resource person and guests who have shared valuable inputs. Your insights contributed to our productive proceedings today. The committee will be forming a technical working group to come up with a fine-tuned substitute bill that will be reported out by the committee and to be defended on the Senate floor. In the meantime, we'll coordinate with the House of Representatives to make sure that they will pass also a similar bill. And uh, I'm very happy, rest assured, that this will be given the priority because we were not able to pass it during the last Congress. So this is the first bill we're going to take up this Congress. And of course, the legislated protected area also will give priority because uh, uh, better na yun para maprotektahan natin yung ating environment. Because it came very handy in my Las Piñas Paranaque Wetland Park and I think it's going to be good also for the other places. I am very appreciative of congressman who uh, filed bill to protect a certain area in their district. Uh, nakakatuwa. Ako natutuwa kasi that means marami pa rin mga congressman ang uh, uh, would like to take care of the environment, di ba? Usually, gusto nila eh, pa-develop na yung mga protected area, but they are the ones fighting that their protected area be legislated. Kasi pinakamagandang protection sa uh, environment be, is to legislate it because it becomes illegal to destroy it, di ba? Kaya maganda yon. So in the meantime... We are suspending this meeting. Thank you very much for attending. And I, I hope we will be able to do good things together in this Congress. Thank you very much. Okay.